every other team in the world goes to bed at night and this is what they see. Astralis are their nightmare. When you think about Astralis, what's the first name that pops into your head? Is it this one? And it looks like Device, just like in the pistols, is gonna stop the fly and he picks up the kills to go with it! Device, Endglaive! And Device yet again. What about this one? It's also flashed off Eagle. Works though. Limited vision, limited it. weapons. Does it even matter, dude? Pray! Oh, the fourth as well! How sick is this round for him? And he's looking for the ace, the first ace from anyone on Astralis in this tournament. And now we're getting pumped. If it's neither of those, it's gotta be this one. Can they get the timing down? Pasha's moving up on the other side of him, and Sibley's gotta be turning his back and down to one health. Bialy with a patience play coming out. Flashbang is in there now. 25 seconds. Headshot coming in from Sipnix. What could Bialy do? He has to find the bomb and make his way onto a site. And look at the angle here. This is not easy. Bialy way out in the open. He gets shot down. Sipnix with the one on three clutch. Oh my God. Whichever one it is, there's a good chance it isn't the name that was most recently added to their roster. He is a little bit crazy and he does play a little bit uh, unpredictably at times. So I think it, it, it's going to be super interesting. Now, that obviously, like, I think. Once you get past the honeymoon period is where it's gonna, that's where the real test is, I think. The one that some people still aren't sure how to pronounce. Yeah, not bad. Morgisk. Mor is that how Morgisk. we say it now? Morgisk. That's Morgisk. Morgisk. how you're supposed to say it, but that one I just can't be asked. Like, I'll go for Zimpex, but Morgisk is just too, you're asking too much of me. There's a good chance that you didn't think of good old Magus Boy as a star player before he joined Astralis, but your opinion has definitely changed. Still holding strong with the M4. Magisk, meanwhile, gets one. Oh my goodness! Simple walked in and just got demolished. This is the story of how a seemingly innocuous player turned a group of talented but historically inconsistent chokers into the greatest CSGO roster of all time. This is the story of a magical boy becoming a man. This is the story of Magisk. Honestly, I can't see why we shouldn't be the best team in the world because we are the best team in the world. Emil Magisk Reif never set out to become a professional Counter-Strike player. It just kind of happened. Growing up in Denmark, he was exposed to the game at a very young age, considering it was one of his friends and family's favorite pastimes. He was only eight years old when he played 1.6 for the first time, and even then demonstrated a natural affinity for the game. It was in 2015 at 17 that Magisk, then known as Magisk Boy, got his semi-professional start in the Kings of Nordic series. He went on to serve short stints in both MTW and Epiphany Bolt before being asked to stand in for SK Gaming for the remainder of ESEA Pro League Season 2. Having just suffered the departure of Danish up-and-comer Config, SK needed someone to fill his slot, so Magisk Boy obliged. Still, people were unsure as to how he performed. It's not that I particularly distrust the players that are in this team, it's just that some of them, like Magic Boy, I don't know that well. And Magisk Boy, Anderson. <laughs> Prior to acquiring Magisk Boy, SK's Pro League record was 0 and 11. By the end of the season, they had got up to 6 and 16 and were able to avoid relegation as a result. It was here in these online matches that Magisk Boy realized he was capable of trading blows with the best of them. The problem is that he was developing a reputation for being an online player. But come his first LAN, that would all change. No kids, this is what I'm talking about. And Kadian, that could be the final nail in the coffin. Zipex coming in from CD Spawn, and there it is! SK Gaming, knockout TQM on the second day of the Frag by Masters. Can you believe it? Unbelievable. After guaranteeing himself a top three finish, Magis Boy went on to face one of the best teams in the world in Fnatic and put on a show-stopping performance. It's actually opened things up a lot. He can still get to be right now. Crims is just going to arrive in time though to cut him off from short fight. Magic seems to have an idea. Oh, what a shot was that? Holy shit, did he ever get <laughs> down? I can't even help myself. That was insane. SK may have lost the series, but not before Magis Boy made his first mark on the professional Counter-Strike scene. Online, he's been 
comparable to the likes of AZ and his fragging ability is off the charts and that shot alone just shows you what he is capable of. Absolutely nuts round there for Magic Boy. Unfortunately, SK's results were never very good after that. By mid-2016, they dropped the roster entirely and Magisk was invited to join Team Dignitas. There, he joined Cajun B, who Astralis had just discarded in favor of Kyarbi, and Config, who was quickly establishing himself as one of Denmark's greatest talents. Before long, Denmark's three hallmark teams were vying for the title of the country's best roster. Danish CS had entered a rebuilding period, and Magisk Boy was hoping to come out on top, but the competition was stiff. There's many good teams, and the team I want to play the least is probably Astralis or Hebraic because we know them so well and we have played them so many times so it's it's always like who have the best day who's gonna win. The problem was that Magis Boy wasn't considered one of Denmark's tier one talents. Sure he was a great player and no stranger to brilliance. And you can just see trying to scout out every position at once he knows he's gonna be getting pushed from all angles and they are coming in roughly at the same time however he will manage one and he finds the second. Now this has just got a little bit interesting magic. Can he go big when needed? Yes, he can! He picks up all four frags! But he just wasn't on the same level as some of the country's best players. They're gonna boost, they're gonna try and go over oranges. No, it looked like Flush was gonna put one up, but it's Kerrigan this time that will hold it off. Not Zipix and Oranges too, Kerrigan instead. AK in his hand, and if they go for the knife in return, I think they tried it. I literally think the player that ran through from water, if I'm not mistaken, it was Dupree, tried to get the knife. Much of this had to do with his inconsistent play. Magis Boy was known for being a wild player, one whose emotions often got the better of him. Magis, this is a dangerous position to be in. They're all coming around the corner. He picked up the first headshot. Not going to go for the second one. Snatch will take him out. And Cajun had already fallen back. He couldn't really help him out up at the corner there. So a little bit unfortunate because if Cajun could have been there once Magic gets the first kill, if Cajun is there to repeat with the AWB, it's very hard for Virtus Pro to punish that kind of a setup. And then, in November of 2016, Magic's boy had his day. I I don't think I've ever seen VP this defeated, especially not in the Grand Finals. They just have no clue what's hit them. Very, very absurd to be watching. And how could you do this? They still have a couple of flashbangs left, even on Dignitas here. Virtus Pro, it's now whenever just go for it. They're being flanked as well. Magus picking up the one kill. Snacks going down, and there it is. Dignitas picking up Epicenter Moscow. The biggest victory today for this team. Coming out of Epicenter, things were looking all right for Dignitas. The issue is that about a month later, the stars finally aligned between Astralis and the in-game leader they'd spent years trying to acquire, Glaive. Within a matter of weeks, the battle for Denmark was over. With Glaive at the helm, Astralis earned six top six finishes at premier events, one of which was a long-awaited major win in January of 2017. And Astralis, they win the first major championship, 16-14 against Virtus Pro. Unbelievable. Where was Magisk, you ask? Also at the major, his first ever, but playing under North, since Dignitas dropped their Danish roster in favor of a North American one following Astralis' surge. I don't think I've ever in my life been so nervous before, so it was really uh, speechless when we finally closed out the game. It was a bit more close than I would have liked to, but it was so amazing to play and, and get the win. Despite making it out of groups, North suffered a gut-wrenching loss to Virtus Pro in the quarterfinals. He's dropped the bomb with 53 seconds to go. It's a three versus two for Virtus Pro. Pass yeah. with the flag. Cajun goes down. Config, fight for your life. He finds Taz. It's late. He's got to get two. Neo's in front. Spots it with the Tech Nine. Headshot there. Looks for the other. Doesn't matter. Pass has got it. And Virtus Pro will go through to the semifinals with a massive comeback against North. After that loss, Magic's performance started to dip. North achieved a slew of subpar results between Atlanta and the next major in Krakow, where they suffered yet another quarterfinal exclusion at the hands of Virtus Pro. This time, Magisk wasn't looking so hot. To try and stave off match point, they, they just have Eagles and Tech Nines here. Oh no, and there's the kill from Neo taking down Magisk. It is not looking good. They're trying to see if they can get down, but they're standing on top of the fire and getting shot for the smoke. And Bialy here to block them off with a smoke, waiting. Cajun goes down. Bialy again, he does it with a third coming in. And that's the quad kill. Welcome to the Virtus Pro Apocalypse. They're one round away from making it to the semifinals. Ironically, it was Virtus Pro who found Magis crying in the lobby after North had benched him following their elimination from the Major. Some speculated that it was because of his play, others because of what an emotional player he was. 
Magisk felt as if he'd hit rock bottom. Down but not out, it wasn't long before Magisk was asked to join Optic Gaming's new European roster. He achieved regional success in North America, but internationally still struggled to set himself apart. He's waiting. He's playing it patiently. And Magisk has no idea where the second player is. Crimps is missed. 10 seconds though, it may not end up mattering. For Magisk to clutch this would pull off some ridiculous play and it won't be happening on this time. Fnatic have done it, 2-1. And then, something happened that would change the entire course of Magic's career. Convinced that Astralis was a sinking ship, weeks before he was supposed to renew his contract, KRB abandoned them to join North. I feel, still feel like we're good friends, but in all honesty, yeah, we would just have appreciated a conversation about it because also still at the moment we really don't know why. When it came to finding KRB's replacement, Astralis could have had any Dane they wanted. They were major winners, after all, and despite Device's health problems, were still considered the country's top roster. The overwhelming expectation was that they'd pick up the biggest Danish star who wasn't on Astralis, Config. The issue is that his role as an entry fragger conflicted with that of Dupree. So, to everyone's surprise, they chose Magisk. No, I didn't uh, expect to join Astralis. It, it kind of came as a shock, uh, but I'm happy I, I got the chance from them. And it was at the very moment of his joining that something changed, not only within Magisk, but within Astralis. There's the flashbang over, yeah, Seals lead in the way, but the follow-up spray, Nitro walks right into it. There goes Twist and Zipnix. Here's a increased speed from Liquid, but Glaive's gonna get that first kill, and Dupree manages things all oh, the pistol whip. That's nice. They are gonna be flanked out, a good entry from Magus, though, and here's Nitro and Allegiant. They gotta come through the smoke if they want a chance, but everyone from Astralis is just straight up winning. Astralis had always been a tremendous roster, so people weren't necessarily surprised when they took DreamHack Masters in Marseille in March of 2018. What they didn't know is that Astralis had just kicked off the greatest dynasty in the history of CSGO. They went on to win ESL Season 7. 1v2. Sneaking on up, they haven't spotted him yet. He's gonna get in close, finds the first, now just has Nap to deal with, and Magisk is gonna find them both. Here he is, tucked away in the hut. He's gonna get smoked off. They're on the bomb, they're sticking it. Taco's on it, Glaive goes oh! through, and they line up for him. Put your hands together, your champions here in Dallas, Astralis. ECS season five. They can try to pick him off, but he must get a car position as well. Device is coming in from the back. Oh, he's missed the first shot, but the second one's good enough. Four on one all of a sudden. Keep your seats down. Here's the footsteps, and there is it. It's good for two kills. His teammate's down, but he's got time to reload. Backs all the way towards the car position. Elevates himself to get shot in the legs, and that's three kills on B. There it is, Astralis, once again. Absolute monsters and the E-League premiere. Just find something weird that Astralis can't handle. Another great pick for Device and another opening kill. And he's gonna go for the follow-up. He's blind, Magisk has got an aid kill. Again, the round is over and why not? Continue challenging, you're on fire. Here's the push up mid. Magisk fighting as he retreats, not able to land anything, but how has he done that? Two kills somehow. Gentlemen, it's your E-League premiere champions. Before steamrolling their way to a second major win in London. It's very difficult, and he's coming in. Trying to hold the line, Flamey. Can he do it? One more, but not the final one. Glaive saves it. Does he see the play to his left? I don't, I'm not sure if he did. Navi, don't expect this. The problem is, even without a kill, this is a lot of information. Ding dong, and that's Zeus taken out. All right, London, let's hear it for Astralis. It became clear that Magisk was exactly what Astralis had needed to take a group of habitually inconsistent stars to the stars, to become the best version of themselves. That in picking up this hardworking but otherwise innocuous Dane, they'd achieved some kind of secret formula. Um, our goal is 100% to win the Grand Slam. It hasn't been done before. Uh, it's a thing that would mean a lot to us. And it's also one of our, yeah, it's basically the one thing we're playing for right now. It also became clear that Astralis was exactly what Magisk had needed to become the player he always dreamed of, in terms of his mentality. You have to use that nerve as something good, and that's what we try to do all the time, and, and use it as something to, to make us even better as players. His reputation. Dead. 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 <laughs> oh my god! And Lord knows, in terms of his play. 
So it all falls on Magisk, and he lines up two bodies. Already finds the timing. That's four. How about a fifth? It's an ace for Magisk. And every once in a while, he'd make a point of reminding everyone how far he'd come. Some super fancy set piece or strategy. It's just Device getting an angle. Bit of BM from Magisk. You do absolutely love to see it. With the Astralis logo proudly situated on his chest, Magisk would go on to rack up seven more first place finishes, becoming one of the first players to win Intel's million dollar Grand Slam and earn his second consecutive major title in Katowice. But you can't mess with greatness. You can't mess with history. And these guys are writing it in every event. Intel Extreme Masters, Champions, Majors, back to back, Astralis again in Katowice. Life had been moving fast since that first fateful win in Marseille, and it was sometimes difficult to keep track of all of it. You also have been crowned MVP oh, of really? this tournament, and this I've been told... This is my first MVP ever. It's not. It is. Wow. Well, Guys, it's go. his first MVP ever. Well, I'm glad we were here for that. I'm glad we were here for that. And yet, through it all, Magisk has remained both humble and hardworking. He knows full well that he's living the dream, that he's achieved heights which most superstars never will, and has never stopped being grateful for the opportunity. We've been working hard for like the last so many months that it's just amazing to see that it finally pays off and, and that we actually managed to go all the way from the qualifier to, to win the actual major, so that's just amazing. And at this point, it doesn't matter whether Astralis win another major, whether their era continues on indefinitely or crashes to a halt they've already cemented themselves as the greatest team to ever live. And it's all because they took a chance on one magical boy. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.